Oh, Holy that was... fuck, that was nice. Whenever you guys say who are, um, because I know how to translate Glaswegian, that's how you pronounce whore. <laughs> so you're calling each other's whores. Okay. Yeah, whore. That's better than ra. So. <laughs> yeah. You just do the monkey noise. Oh, oh. That's uh, if you're going to do ra, you got to get ooh right in there. No. That's some <laughs> fat shit. <laughs> I hate that shit in movies, dude, when they're like, ooh, rah. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Nobody does that. Was it? Unless you're like, some that... fucking. Huh? Huh? Was it? Ooh, rah, simplify, live or die? <laughs> Whatever it is. Ah, uh, ooh, or die. <laughs> some fucking stupid shit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you get you a hard on when you're fucking 19 years old to go die for oil and the rich. A.K.A. Garrison about five years ago. Uh, accurate. Except I was 20. And then I thought for myself, saw what was happening overseas. Like, oh, we shouldn't be here. But I want to kill someone. Yeah, Legally. it was funny. I was um, chatting with Andrew Measley the other night. He's in the, uh, I think he's currently in the New Zealand Army. And he said, um, we do have javelins, apparently, in New Zealand. Do you know how many you're allowed to fire for training? None. Point five. <laughs> one. <laughs> you can fire one because that's our budget. <laughs> like we have a we have a ship with a C Ram or a C Wiz, and I said to him, "Like, I take it you guys don't fire. You guys wouldn't fire that that much." And he said, "No, no, not at all. Actually, it's like you you put you go through one belt of that, and it's like, yep, that's the budget gone." <laughs> What is uh what is the new or the newer US destroyer that its fucking five inch gun costs about the same as one sh- uh fucking eighteen inch shell from a battleship? Uh uh no I didn't. It's some uh, sort of smart fucking fuse time yeah. thing. And, yep. Yeah. It's like the U- USS Carney or something like that, isn't it? Is that the new one or is that no? I don't uh, know ships. I forget. But the USS get fucked. <laughs> It's like all these new navy ships. These, you know, they 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 don't even look like a ship. No, they don't. They're, They're just fucking so weird. fucking ugly. Yep, mm. I always hated looking at have them. Have you seen a? Have you seen the British one that's got that giant like sort of tower in it, and it looks like a diamond? It's the most hideous thing in the world. You want right. to get started? So how are we going? Recording for like three minutes. So you're actually recording right now? Yep. It all sounds all right. Uh, it shows that it's picking up sound, so that's good. Might want to get rid of the Discord and the OBS. Yeah, I was just uh, waiting for you guys to start, or to say you was ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Are you ready, Garrison? I'm ready. Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Start the fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Welcome to the Micro Machines podcast. This week... Clint is going to be going all through about how to design and cut out uh, silhouette masks for masking and stuff like that. Am I right? Uh, yeah, I'll show you how to take you know the, either an image from online or you know uh, your decal sheet and turn the turn into paint masks. This is actually really well timed because on the uh, New Zealand Discord server, uh, there is a Discord server for with a lot of New Zealanders in it. Uh, if anyone's interested, I'll let them know because. You know, there's not a lot of Kiwis in the world, so... Um, but we are literally talking about uh, people buying vinyl cutters, silhouette cutters, all that, and looking into that, and I said, and I just went, oh, we're about to do a podcast uh, episode with a tutorial for all of that, so uh, good timing. But before we get into that, we need to do some introductions. So you've got me, Callum, from New Zealand, as I just said, and... I've just got a soda tonight because uh, I'm broke as fucking can't afford alcohol. So it's got a pink grapefruit soda, low sugar because I'm also fat. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Garrison from Kansas, drinking a coffee and putting together this shitty ass Arc Models fucking grill. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you got me, Clint from Indiana, and I have a nice Arnold Palmer. 
half lemonade, half iced tea. With a shot of honey. It is all yeah. Roxa. Introducing now Clint, who's going to now start talking, and I'm going to shut up for a little bit, <laughs> except for ask questions, because I have no idea what is going to be going on in this tutorial. So all the listeners will be learning at the same time I will. <laughs> same. Slowly. All right, uh, both of you can uh, see the Silhouette Studio screen? That we can. All right. Yes. Uh, so this is Silhouette Studio. This is the free version, which they do have a paid one, but unless you're doing you're you know, fancy scrap burking stuff, you don't need it. This Everything that comes in the free version uh, is you can take your, you know, your decal sheet and turn them into mass. Um, but also because you're cheap? Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> I mean, that's, valid. that's a given. Um, now, there's there's several different uh, brands. I think the main two is the Silhouette, uh, and then you also got uh, the Cricket. I'm sure a lot of this will probably be the same for Cricket. I don't know. I don't have one. I have a Silhouette Portrait 2, which I do believe there is a Gen 3 one out now. Um, mine has the Auto Blade feature, which is really nice. Uh, just you don't have the program automatically sets like the uh, cutting depth of your blade okay so uh we have a new uh, work area here i've got the i used the sticky little a4 sized oh what you call it, cutting mat that uh, comes with the machine and i put my vinyl on top of it. it they say you don't have to use this but your cuts come out a lot neater by using the cutting mat uh, one cutting mat will last you probably 25 to 30 cuts. I mean, that is a little cost in there, but they're also only like 8 or $9 per mat. So, it's it's worth it, believe me. Uh, the vinyl that I use is Aura Mask uh, 810, which is uh, a transparent gray. And it is the same stuff that Montex Masks uses uh, to make their... Uh, Final mass. Right, uh, any questions? So you're saying um, there is a silhouette and cricket. Um, there is two different uh, main machines. One is the silhouette, which is what I have, and the other one is a cricket. I uh, really don't know what the difference between the two is um, with uh, software-wise, but they both will do the same thing. Uh, I have a silhouette portrait two, which I believe there is a third gen one out now. Okay, so we got a new workspace open up here. I use uh, the cutting mat uh, with mine, which they say to cut vinyl, you don't have to use it, but I prefer using it. It makes your cuts come out looking cleaner, and uh, well, you get about 25 to 30 cuts per mat, which, so there is a cost there, but again, to me, it, I think it, it's worth it. Uh, so is, that, is that a mat on the actual cutter itself? Uh, yes, uh, this thing is self-adhesive, so you, um, it's got a little piece of uh, clear plastic over it, you pull that off and it's uh, sticky, and then you put your vinyl, stick it to the cutting mat, and then you feed this into the machine. Alright, so it's kind of like <clears throat> sort of like a um, laser cutter type of thing, but not quite as fancy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I got you now. I'm just trying to visualize what it, what it looks like and then I can, yeah. Okay. Uh, again, this is uh, mine is a Silhouette Portrait 2. It's got uh, the auto blade on it, <clears throat> which the auto blade, it just, the uh, software will automatically set the depth of the blade cut for you instead of you having to manually set the, the cutting blade, which is, uh, that's pretty nice. A bit, bit of a uh, plug and play, not, not too much dicking around. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could set everything from the studio and then just hit, you know, send and, you know, the, mach the software take care of talking to the machine, so you just pretty much have to power the machine up. That's pretty sweet. That's my favorite kind of machinery. <laughs> um, I think we've already, I'm not sure if we recorded the part. It's like the Silhouette Studio. This is the free version. Yep. Yep. Okay. Got that. Got that. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, before we get started, you guys got any questions? Just one in regards to how this thing cuts. So it's, so I take it uses a, um, a blade? Yes, it is a very, very tiny, sharp blade. And I take it when it's cutting, it's actually on a... Uh, does it swivel round to um, create cuts? Because, you know, trying to cut a uh, curve with a standard blade is a ball lake and a half, let alone, you know, trying to do that. Is that does it just, like, naturally swivel round by itself, or does the uh, machine actually turn the blade to um, to make the cut? Uh, the blade is in a carriage. It looks pictured just like your standard uh, laser printer. It's got the print head that moves back and forth. Uh -huh. And 
uh, then your other axis is it's uh, the cutting mat here. It goes um, back and forth as as well in and out of the machine. You know, again, kind of like a printer, except it can also reverse. And then you got your blade holder on the carriage head, and yeah, that carriage head can uh, turn the turn the blade 360 as well to make curves. Oh, nice! And you can get some pretty tiny cuts. Um, there is one that I just did on my hind. Which that's where we're gonna go through is uh, showing you how I made the uh, mask for the hind. Yep, but, yep. Uh, they're only three millimeters uh, tall, and very, very thin lines, and it it still cut them, no problem. Jesus. So yeah, let's uh, open up. Now, uh, what I do is I just take my cell phone and take a picture of the decal sheet. And then I use my micrometers uh, to measure the size of the decal so that I can then scale it to the correct size on the cutting mat here. So open up. And this is the decal that's on the uh, tail of the KI-61. Holy. All right. Now we can do did over here. Did you get both of those done? Or did you do both of those or just the big one? Uh, I just uh, did this one. Uh, the aircraft that I... Um, chose it did not have this uh, kanji on it, right? Which was good because <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I mean it could trace this, but it would be a pain in the butt to try to uh, trace that. All right, so uh, we've got different tools over here. We got move, uh, we got uh, edit points, which we're not going to really use. Uh, then we got different ones like make squares, make ovals, make circles, stuff like that. Uh, you could add text. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get Go to draw line and then move over to uh, the second one, which is uh, draw polygon. And then you can zoom in on it as uh, much as you want to make it uh, make it easier. And then we can find a point. Start right here, and you just start tracing over the decal. All right. So it's just like most of the manual work you have to do is just tracing the uh, tracing it. Yeah. It it you know really doesn't take long on you know something simple like this. Uh, usually I'd be more precise, but, you know, just want to get through this quick just, you know, to show you guys the process. Yeah, yeah, this isn't one that's going to go on a... Uh, so, you, no. you can basically make this as sharp or as soft as you want it. Yeah. Yeah, so if, it, if I was actually going to do this, you know, put on my aircraft, I would take the time, make sure, you know, I get all these lines lined up. You can see I'm a little off-centered there. Right. <laughs> but, if for... What we're doing right here, this will be just fine. And for something like this, how long would it usually take you to do these steps? Uh, probably about 20 minutes to go through and do this properly. Well, yeah. it just depend, all depends on like uh, what it is you're uh, tracing out as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And now for this right here, this has got a curve to it. Let's see, where's uh, take the snippers here. Oh, I cut the whole thing. Shoot. Uh, where is it? All right, draw a curve shape. So we'll come here. You could just set points, and it'll automatically draw a curve line that follows them points. So that's how you make that there. Jeez, this program's more intuitive than the bloody uh, design and survey draw program I use. I can't even do that on that. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of wild if you think about it. You're designing right. one to one fucking landscape shit, and <laughs> he's making math for a scale model, <laughs> and he's got a. He's got an easier bloody program to use. The one, although the, the program I use is like definitely because there's a lot of copyright issues with stuff. Um, certain steps are too similar to say a competing a rival company, so they have to like go round that circumspect sort of way. So it, uh, the program I use is the least user friendly in the world. It's horrible. <laughs> that sucks. So this thing here every side of it is a curve and again you know if you take your time you can really you know hug this i'll just throw in dots down quick so you know this doesn't we're not sitting here for 20 minutes i'll take it uh for like say roundels uh that tool would be used or does would do you have a specific circle for that one oh yeah for roundels we can just uh go here to uh, i think there's a draw a draw an oval or draw an ellipse, and we can make a circle with that. All right. Now, a question for you, Clint. Yeah. If, let's say you wanted, you're making a mask, mm -hmm. and you wanted, um, obviously, you got to tape it down, right? Yeah. Do, whenever you tape down this this mask, can you extend the border 
on the outside of this. Yeah. To give I'll, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys. <clears throat> I'll do that here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I won't try and jump ahead. Just curious. Didn't know if that was a thing or not. Oh, yeah. Shoot, right. I might get me one of those. So here's our uh, basic shape drawn out here. I'm going to zoom out, go back here to our move, and I can move the decal sheet out of the way and just delete that, and that's left with our cutout. Oh, nice. I and like that. It looks cool. What I do is I then take uh, just a, the square making tool, go around it, and so on the vinyl, the, the big sheet of vinyl, it will cut out the square and then also cut out this mass that we put inside of it. Uh, another thing we're going to have to do really quick is each one of these pieces is going to be considered something different. So if I click on this one, you know, I try to move it somewhere else. Well, no, it's just going to move that. Drag across all of it, select all, and then group. And now this whole thing is one piece that we can move anywhere. No shit. And now, uh, we need to uh, scale it because right now this is a uh, 50 uh, by well 50.8 millimeters by 87.64, which yeah, I yeah, just a little bit big. Yeah, which I sorry guys, I jumped the gun on this. So let's uh, back up here, ungroup all these, get rid of the square. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to group these pieces because we need to scale them first before I put a square around them. I'm sorry about that. All, all right. good, all good. All right, so now this whole thing is one piece, and it is showing that it is 36.98 millimeters tall by 52.66 millimeters wide. Now, I used my micrometers, and I measured the size of the decal, and we have a width of uh, the decal as being 27.75 millimeters. So come up here, and make sure we lock the ratio, and we'll change the width to 27.75. Okay, now that's the correct size for the paint mask. Now we'll draw a square around it. Now group all these. All right, there we go. And I take it the only way to really verify if you've scaled it correctly is to cut it and compare it? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the main thing. But after you uh, do them for a while, I mean, you get pretty close. Honestly, that's, that's as long as, I mean, if you're talking, you know, like 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters, no one's really going to notice. Surely. <laughs> There'll be that one guy. Now, for drawing circles, I wish it, they had a just draw circle, but they have this draw e ellipse, so it's hard to get a perfect circle, but draw circle. Uh, the round rules on the decal sheet are 22.6, so we'll just go up here, unlock the ratio, and make both of them 22.6. Boom, perfect circle. Nice. Again, I'll draw a square around that and group them. All right. Now for this one here, we can take this. We can make a copy of it, paste it. And now, uh, oh, here we go. Flip for, oh, no, I want to flip horizontally. Flip horizontally. And now we got uh, one for the other side of the tail without having to, you know, draw the other decal. We can just draw one and then mirror it. That's freaking sweet. That way it's exact. Yep. And then one of the other things that I showed, uh, I was telling you guys about, is the kit didn't come with the decals for uh, this one. Uh, but those look, are the, uh, what are those ones again? They're the wing? Yeah, um, they're not flaps. kanji. I've been told that that's not kanji. I forget what, uh, kat katak katakan? I am so sorry. I forget what the <laughs> what they're called. <laughs> but yeah, these... You're doing better than us. Uh, these are the decals that are on the trailing edge of the ring. So, uh, same thing. I mean, they're very simple shapes. Come in, trace them out really quick. So with, so with this program, you can literally take a photo of anything, and as long as you can scale it right, you can make a uh, mask for it. Yes. And then we That's can like grab this line here, and we can pull it in to make that curve. And same way with this one, we can pull it out. I don't need that anymore. Again, that's not the best, but I so say you could sit here and tweak this to get it the correct uh, yep. correct size that you want it. So, my measurements are showing that this is 2.9 millimeters tall, and right now we're at 22.07. So, we'll just come up here, lock ratio. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll just put the height as 3 millimeters. Boom. And it will cut that. 
Jesus. It. I I thought it it was going to have a hard time doing it, uh, so I tried it, and it it cut him out perfectly. Yeah, that that's impressive. So say um, so with this uh, what's it called silhouette? Uh, the um, silhouette studio. So uh, can you uh, are you able to like access it without owning the cutter itself, or is that uh, is it like a package thing? I believe you can download it without. Uh, yeah, because it's a it's a free download online. Okay, so theoretically, like if you have a friend, say who has a who has a cutter, uh, you can design your own sort of cutout and then just send him the file. Exactly. Is that the same for say if you had use Silhouette and Cricket? Like say if you use Silhouette and you have a friend who's got Cricket, do they just use the same file f- format or? Uh. Right. Is there any interchangeability between those or not really? Yes. Or you can let's see, save as the hard drive. Uh, yes, you could save it as a GSP file, and any uh, plotting program should be able to uh, read it. I right. Think. Okay. But then, of course, you got the V V two Studio V three Studio. It can only be read by Silhouette Studio. Right. Okay. So theoretically, I can download this program. I can design my own masks, and then I could send it to you, and then you can send me. Perfectly cut masks. Oh yeah, yeah. If you you uh, anything you design, it's like you could send me the file. I could cut them and then send you the finished uh, mask to you. Noted. That's freaking. I awesome. have a lot of ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I will say the minute you have that sort of knowledge, the amount of um, flexibility with models suddenly just becomes a lot more. Like suddenly, it's like oh, uh, haven't got this sort of decal for this vehicle, or I haven't got. Yeah, I need to find this decal sheet for that, or so, or you're limited to whatever's in you know the box or something like that. But suddenly it's like, oh, well, I've got a, I've got multiple photos of this one, and I can scale it properly. Yeah, Dude, hmm. uh, imagine the the possibilities with making like HIDF units for like insignias for vehicles and and art and shit. Oh, definitely. I'm thinking even even just like slogans, God. you know, using different fonts for slogans on the side of things. Holy. Yeah. I'm suddenly like suddenly I'm getting like a lot of ideas now, and that's not a good thing for me because <laughs> another thing is uh, that I just keep around is open here is stuff like this, and then you know I just so I don't have to trace this every time. I can just open this up, figure out what uh, the s- size is on the decal sheet, and scale this, and boom, already got uh, got one of these United States Air Force stars ready to go. That's freaking sweet. And I got yeah. several different ones uh, ready to ready to go. Here's one with the with the bar. You know, I took time to make sure you know I got this one nice and crisp. So it just yeah, just saves, saves a little time. Because like once you've done it once, then you, it can be used for any other specific aircraft or anything like that. Oh, definitely. And I got several different ones. Also got call numbers here uh, from the, the different styles were used. Like once I was used by Lockheed. Uh, North American, North Republic, Bell. This is one of the Lockheed ones. They've all been nicely traced out. And what I can do is I can take and I, you can ungroup these. You can cut these and you can just take this one and then you can you know make your own number sequence and then cut them out from there. I really like how flexible this program is. Oh yeah. Like just the, the fact that nowadays, you know, instead of um, say having to try and freehand uh, insignias or you know, like if you see it, if you see an aircraft or a tank that's got specific markings on it, you don't have to try and freehand it or anything like that. You literally just take a photo and sc- trace it and scale it right, and you have it in like perfect. Oh yeah, this is uh, the one that I made for my Hine. These are all the ones I made up. Uh, also did the sixty six, uh, which was the aircraft number uh, that's on the on the landing gear doors. Kind of interesting. They do their um, identification there on the landing gear. Yeah. Uh, of course, this wasn't uh, from the kit. This is one that you know I just made a simple six. Uh, you know, looking at pictures of the aircraft that I was uh, depicting, and then scaled them to the same size, which was the number twenty-four on the aircraft that I was using to make them the same height. But once you uh, once you get everything you know set up and you're ready to cut, then you just click over here, send, and my my uh. 
Portrait 3, it gets hooked up to uh, via Bluetooth. And I said it's got the auto blade on it. I've The material I use is a Silhouette Oracle 651. Um, I'm actually using uh, Oracle 810, but the 651 profile uh, works. It's just, it works better in my opinion. Uh, it cuts just a little bit harder. And it also could be because my blade is a little bit taller. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, How much does a blade usually cost? Twelve dollars. Uh, I mean, what's your excuse then? <laughs> uh, I mean, I got an extra one. It's just I'm too lazy. But yeah, once yeah, you get no, here, uh, it, it, right now it says unavailable. You know, it once you hook it up and it say connected, then you just hit send and it will cut all this out. And it, uh, this took less than three minutes to cut out. Damn. So. Damn, that's pretty good. Like you can get stencils out pretty quick then. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you guys got any questions? So how, how much do one of these set you back? Uh, Roughly. I got mine on Amazon for... Oh, gee, I, I've had this now for going on like three years. I think I paid right around $100 for it. That's, that's less than I thought it would be. I think I think someone on the New Zealand Discord said that he found one for about $200 here, which is about... Yeah, roughly the same price. So, well, I was expecting them to be way more pricey than that. Oh yeah, it's not very bad. I say the cricket machines is like you—they got like really small ones, and they and they're like a hundred and some dollars. I think you can actually get some of them for you know less than a hundred. And then they got yeah, some really big I ones too. Yeah, I remember and sold them for like sixty bucks. Yeah. Jesus. But just wonder how good those ones would be they're just small they're they're like cricket brand and shit they're just really small so i mean for this type of stuff I, just from what clint's shown i think they'd work out really good yeah you just you just have to cut your vinyl down a lot more which i know or a mask some people say it's hard to find i get it from a place only called the vinyl shop uh last time i bought it, i bought it, i think it was 20 yards at like six dollars a yard uh, it's gonna last me probably forever. <laughs> <laughs> Just did a giant bulk order. <laughs> oh yeah, and it made me made not it wasn't even that much. Uh, I I know it was like the more you bought, the cheaper it was. Yeah, yeah. So and that's vinyl. What about paper? Would it work on paper? or Is it like not as good? Uh, you can cut paper. Uh, but you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you know with paper. Uh, I've seen people take, uh, like, Tamiya sells the kabuki tape, like, in big sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, you know, you can use that. Uh, you might be able just to take the yellow frog tape and tape it down and cut that with this. I've never tried it, but it would be feasible, I would think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how so how often on your uh, models now do you actually design your own decals for them? Uh, I try to every one now. Just because a painted on marking looks so much better. Yeah. So stuff like, say, for German, German armor, it'd just be like simple iron crosses and stuff like that. So it's, oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's very easy to cut out. Yeah. I mean, marking, like a lot of ve vehicle markings aren't too, you know, um, intricate because, hey, guess what? In real life, they had to paint that shit as well. And they don't like in intricate stuff, even on a large scale, even on a large aircraft. Oh, yeah. And also, yeah, you want them simple because you don't have a lot, a lot of time to see them. That's why I've got several, you know, different ones. I mean, this, these are made for aircraft, but the ones that was on armor is about the same. Yeah, so you might get inundated with a few files from me then once I figure out how to use that program. Uh, that's fine <laughs> with me. <laughs> what a I... gentleman in a scholar. So I could put them in an envelope, and I think an international stamp is like a dollar seventy-five or something like that. And then I'll just have to try and trust New Zealand Postal Service to actually deliver it. Yeah, it'll probably take two months. <laughs> uh, more than probably more That's than after that. I mean, the country. <laughs> I mean that, like, I think um, uh, Nick Scalamer he sent me over some of his um, stickers. Uh huh. And he said, he, you know, he, he said he sent them, and then it was months and months, and he's going, have they actually turned up? And I said, they, they, they haven't. <laughs> and he, then he sent over a, um, 
an airfix RAF personnel kit that he didn't want. He, so he included tickets in that. And it was about three months later, the first stickers that he sent me turned up at work. And I was like, I said to him, I was like, you wouldn't believe it. They've just turned up now. And it was like five months. Jesus fucking bro. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I was suddenly goes, like, I think they've gotten lost or something. <laughs> That's. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Fuck. Yeah, you never know. Might They might show up, I don't know, in a year or so. <laughs> yeah. If I start planning now, I might have it done by 2025. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's definitely something that, you know, once I, once my financial situation is a little bit better than it is now, it's definitely something I want to have a look into because I've got the 3D printer, which I need to use a bit more. But I'm still trying to figure out settings on that. I did print off two fairly decent 350 scale Sherman Zippos. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, still still working on trying to figure all of that stuff out and trying to get it to work properly. But yeah, then having a vinyl cutter just it gives you more freedom. I oh think. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you're not uh, just holding to you know what decals you have on hand or what come with the kit or what you or can what buy. You, can buy. You, you know, you see you know something online and you know, especially like a. Oh, a color profile on, online, you pull up like one that was like in a squadron book or something, and you know, you could take a picture, you know, of the page in the book, you know, put it mm-hmm. on your computer and then you know, trace it and scale it and boom, there you go. Yeah. Or even like say, um, camouflage markings. You know, yes. camouflage schemes. You know, draw the, you can trace them out and yeah, those things would be uh very invaluable. Oh, definitely. Especially on something that's got has like a Miranda, uh, yeah, Miranda pattern or, um, like a very tight model or something. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because trying to f- like mask that uh, that kind of stuff up your by yourself is it's a right pain in the nuts. Yeah. I've tried it, <laughs> and well, it's like um, you know, that French fighter I built the MS four hundred six. When it's mm-hmm. got it's the the real intricate three toned, I ended up paintbrushing uh, that one just because I'm sitting. I don't know how to mask this up <laughs> with tape and all that for the different colors. Whereas, chances are, if I had one of those, yeah, their camouflage games are very uh, tight and intricate. Mm-hmm. But if I had one of those and then just print out, you know, top of the wings and either side of the fuselage and then just lay those down and then just pull the ones you want off a, off and all of that. That would just Oh yeah. Make it a lot yeah. easier. <laughs> I think a, I mean look a lot better than what it does now. <laughs> you gotta think about it too, like masking stuff like this, it's gonna look way better the finished product being sprayed on than a than a fucking decal. Oh definitely. Oh yeah. Like how many times do you get like a paint paint job done so well, and then right at the end you put a decal on, and it doesn't adhere properly, or it silvers, or you can see the edges on it, or you know it doesn't look right, mm-hmm. you know, so me, or it doesn't weird. fit right. So it's like near a cor- on a corner or on a ridge, and it just like lifts itself. It's yep. oh, it destroys it. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I've, yeah, I've had that multiple times. You just you look and it's like it was so nice, and now it just looks like shit. <laughs> Then you got some decal companies, like, to me, is, like, probably the biggest offender of it. Their decals are so thick. It's, mm. like, no matter what, it's, like, they silver. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I was trying to put their decals on the B-25s for the um, Hornet, and they were, the decals themselves were off-center from the film, which mm-hmm. is also annoying. But, yeah, they would not, like, they were thick enough that they would not stick down properly. Because mm-hmm. the uh, fuselage is slightly rounded and they got raised lines, so it doesn't matter how much decal setter and fix and all of that I put in, they just wouldn't soak down into it. So that's one one, yeah, <laughs> that was one thing that annoyed the fuck out of me. Because if I press down too hard, then the decal would just lift away with the cotton bud. Oh yeah, and yeah, I'm sure my neighbors heard me through the wall on that one. <laughs> Damn it! What the fuck? Yeah, pretty much, or <laughs> a lot of that. They probably thought I was abusing someone online or something. <laughs> probably. Another uh, paint job that I want to try uh, using 
mass that I cut is one of the German ambush pattern ones. That's pretty much, you know, they took a coffee can and they sprayed around it to get these, you know, perfect, like, half circles and uh, stuff. Yeah, um, oh, disc, disc camo. Yeah. It's, I want to... Yeah, those look... Yeah, I want to use this to try to make them patterns for that. Oh, yeah, that'll look cool. That's company, bro. I mean, for that, um... You could probably buy, what I was thinking for doing something like that, is just buying a uh, sticker sheet of dots. Oh, yeah. You know, from any craft store and using those, but hell, masking that, masking like that would also work really well and cheap. Yeah, I mean, both of them. Hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, that's a simple solution right there. I, I had a complicated answer for it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but yeah. there's still a lot you can do. So, like, oh, even yeah, say, um, well, like, you know, the ambush scheme where you got, like, they got, like, the color stripes and then you got the dots in them? Yeah. I mean, you could probably get, like, fairly, you could just make random dot patterns within that scheme, and that would probably work as well. Yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't. Another, Damn, thing, you could, so many ideas now. another thing you can do with this, too, is, like, take a uh, cardstock. You can't, you can, you can cut cardstock with this, it dulls your blades a lot faster. But you can make, um, like, splatter stencils. And, you know, that's something you can, like, hold up for doing, like... Um, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep, I've got those. Not in cardstock, I've got photo which ones. But, yeah, I know the ones you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, you, you can make them out of uh, out of cardstock with this. Oh, nice. And I've never tried it, but some people said you can also cut really thin styrene with it. Um, I guess some ship modelers uh, use it to... Uh, Cut out small, uh, small pieces for ships out of really thin styrene. But there's, you definitely there's tons of uses. Make, you definitely want to make sure that styrene is like well stuck down, though, for that. Oh, definitely. Uh, hmm. Guys, got any questions for me? Mm. No, I think you covered it pretty damn well. No, I don't think I did, but <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you become are, a train wreck. Because these are you can literally make anything. With this, I'm mm. thinking, okay, mask for canopies, and uh, I guess that would be a little more difficult, though, huh? Uh, well, that'll be trying to get a 3D onto a 2D plane. Yeah. It'd be really hard to, to do in a way, but say you bought an Edward set of canopy masks, but you got, like, two or three of the same aircraft... You could take a picture of the mask, take the dimensions of the ones already there, trace the ones that are already there, and then boom, you got a copy of the Edward ring, except instead of kabuki tape, it's going to be in vinyl. Or you could also cut it out in kabuki tape, too, I guess. Yeah, that would work. Uh, now, I wouldn't advise going and selling that, because that would be, you know, a form Copyright. of theft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for your own yeah, for personal your own... use. Yeah. What they don't know won't hurt them. Yeah. And it's like, now, me, I'm lazy. I would just buy two and, you know, call it a day. <laughs> now, some of the newer Tamiya kits, it's like this Hine, it came with uh, canopy masks, but they wasn't pre-cut. He was just had the outline yeah, that, of where to cut. I mean, I guess, the, I think that's their work around uh, cutting costs, but also supplying something. Which, believe me, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Oh yeah, and they worked out very well. The lightning that I did, it also had uh, the canopy mask, which is very nice. But other than that, I usually don't mess around with buying canopy masks unless it's like a bomber or something with a ton of glass. It's like, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> sit there and cut out each individual pane. I'll just give me an Edward mask. All right. Well, that was a good little tutorial. I think we'll uh, jump into an intermission and we'll finish off the rest of the episode. So we'll be right back. And we are back with the hobby news. And I think there are some fairly decent uh, new kits that are coming out this week. Uh, some of them, one of them, because I, I did this, so I already know what's in them, but one of them I am particularly excited for and really want to get my hands on. So let's get into it. Let's do it. First off, from IBG, something a little bit different uh, in 70 second scale. We have a Luftwaffe starter cart and transport crate for an engine, specifically the Jumo 213, which is included in the kit. The uh, Jumo 123 is the um, it's the engine used by the Focke Wolf 190, I want to say it's the D9, the Dora 9. 
which is the elongated one, uh, elongated nose one. And just something to uh, add to your diorama, basically. I think it would be kind of kind of cool to have a uh, yeah, an airfield diorama of something a bit different from IBG. They've been putting out some cool stuff lately, so it's good to see it. Good I'll on you, definitely IBG. Definitely get one of these. Oh yeah, like I really want to build another Dora Nine. I think the the uh, Dora Focke Wolves are the best looking. Oh, they are. They are just beautiful. Yeah, not the uh, not the TA one five twos. They look ugly because you know with the uh, long wings and everything. Long wings and all that. No, they don't look good. But the Dora Nine Focke Wolves, so they're the best looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Up next yes, from yes, Lanmo yes. Models, we have a BA sixty four B light armored car from the uh, Soviets, and this is in thirty fifth scale. Thirty fifth scale as part of their thirty one to forty five series. So the BA sixty four B is a very small light car used by the Soviets. It has a DT machine gun and a rotating turret, and is crewed by two men. And it's just such a cool little vehicle. Uh, so this one's got ooh, slogans all around it. It's got a really interesting way to get in and out that little doorway on the side there. So, have you seen the uh, CAD rendering pictures of this? Uh, no. no, it looks fucking sweet. Does it? Has it got yes. full interior? Full interior. Oof. And actually, like... with the because I think it is an open topped um, turret on the, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, wait no yeah yes yes it is yes it is yeah yeah sweet because Lan lanmo they've just been doing a lot of like aftermarket type stuff you know the uh like the sherman dozer turret and crab flail mm. that's two that i know offhand so this is the first time i think i've seen them do a full kit this looks like a bastard 222 it kind of is it's um it's a bit like the BA-10 light armored car, but the BA-10 is longer. To be fair, this was made before the 222, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, uh, like, I don't know, Soviet stuff. Yeah, it kind of looks like a Jeep that's been retrofitted with armor, in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they look so cool, so this is definitely one that I want to get. It's like, hey, cunts, make this work. There it is. Uh, so from Hobby Boss in 70 second scale, we're getting a new TBM-3 Avenger. Uh, something uh, very cool to look out for because Avengers are cool. Is this a new mold or is it a... Uh, yes. Is it just a Reebok accurate miniatures? Uh, from what I can tell, it's a brand new tooling, but you never know. Sometimes they say new tooling, but it's actually, you know, the kit, the uh, previous company. Uh, they just had, you know, they just updated the tooling sort of thing, so it would, you never know. Uh, from Vespid Models in 70 second scale, we are getting the Panther KF-51, the uh, sort of futuristic German main battle tank that they announced a few years ago. Yes. It's been around for a while, but it's got that really cool, um, it's not a drone, it's a missile, isn't it? Sort of yes. thing. <laughs> but, yeah. Cool looking tank, very futuristic. And 70 second scale, they have the Vespid model 70 second scales are, of course, very, very good. So if you're into the, that scale, one to look out for. This is the one that I really, really want from Vespid models. They've released a 35th scale tank. This is the Cruiser Tank Mark 8 Challenger no, A30. No, Cal, um, that's the. Uh, that's the fucking comet on uh, from Wish. <laughs> so this is the uh, late production <laughs> Challenger. Uh, it is actually what it is is they tried to turn the uh, Cromwell. This is not a comet. This is based on the Cromwell uh, into a tank destroyer with the seventeen pounder. Of course, the uh, the Cromwell was only ever armed with the seventy five QF. Um, gun, and whereas the Challenger was trying to use that chassis and put a seventeen pounder in it, which they did, and it's a cool looking tank. I really, really want one. Yeah, 
Driver's looking out the hatch like, you what, mate? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you say what, cunt? <laughs> what about me tea? <laughs> I will say the uh, the British markings with the hussar uh, on the right there does look go pretty hard. Yes. From ICM, we are getting a figure kit. This is the tank crew of the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, and they promise this is 100% new molds. And this is part of their Ukrainian... Uh, war set and I think there's going to be a lot of call for this one uh, I know someone in the podcast will want them I'm going to wait until somebody recaps them in a resin <laughs> <Ali. laughs> I don't know but, man they look Russian to me <laughs> <laughs> but guarantee this is going to sell pretty well probably oh yeah oh yeah and from Amusing Hobbies, we're getting the Black Eagle, also known as the Object 640, which is, uh, I'm not too, I don't know too much about these sort of modernist Soviet tanks, but it looks fairly cool, and apparently it's got a very big gun. I think it's got a 130 or a 152, something like that. But, yeah. If anyone knows what they are, meh. Better, I bet it would blow up just as easily. Uh, I bet that turret comes off real easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and lastly, from Kinetic, this isn't a uh, new kit, but it's a new decal set, and the only reason I'll do a new decal set uh, announcement is if it's really cool. And this one is, this is for their 1-48 to 48 scale F-16, is it the D that's the two-seater? And it is in the color scheme of the Thunderbirds. So, hmm. something that I'm sure a lot of people would want, because, uh, yeah, it's a cool-looking scheme. Well, okay. that is all for Hobby News this week. Now we're going to move on to the whips. All right, I've got three slides. We'll run through these real quick. Current work in progress is piece of shit fucking ARC models. Sorry, excuse of a model kit called the Grill. Uh, cool vehicle. But uh, the kit itself sucks balls. Huh. Is that because nothing fits together? Nothing fits together. The instructions are not clear at all. Like it shows like the parts you need, but like half the time it doesn't show you exactly where the parts go. And uh, there's only that picture of the front of the vehicle. So it's like, okay, well, what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, it's fun. I'm having I'm having a good time. This is helping with my depression. <laughs> <laughs> uh finished up my little tarwa series or pacific series this is a uh, stewart stuck on macon island two u.s army soldiers walking by um uh, kind of just looking at the the stewart tanks emerged in a blast crater it was a quick little build it was fun you got through this one so quick oh you dude did. it was it was very easy to do. Like, honestly, there wasn't much to it. Like, two and a half figures, the Stewart tank, which is a Tamiya kit, so it went together quick, and then it was easy. I mean, it was a simple paint job, and the weathering was pretty easy. I still think it would it would look better in the uh, Toy Soldier green. Uh, oh, it definitely would have. <laughs> <would've. laughs> this is where our opinions will vary, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, here's just a couple pictures of the infantrymen I did. These are probably my favorite U.S. infantrymen I've ever painted up. I, I think they came out really fucking good. Um, I'm definitely happy with how like the base uniform turned out. I figured out how to do... Because I remember watching all these YouTube videos showing like how to figure paint. And they're talking like, oh, you got to do like six fucking... Uh, steps for glazing and it's like bro I don't want to do that you know uh, and then I, I've I've figured it out to get some nice light highlights on the uniforms you just do one like medium glaze with uh, the base color and that's it like that's then you just paint the rest of it the same way after you mm -hmm. prime it white and it brings out some highlights so when, that way you don't have to go in and individually brush mark all the shit and I just I don't know I, I fuck with it 
They look pretty damn good, I gotta say. Oh, yeah, the results are excellent. All right, uh, we have a Pacific Group build going on until September first. Come throw in a wreck or a competition submission. Got one prize uh, for the competition section. Only one person can win it. It's a pretty good prize. If you're curious to what it is, join the Discord, find out, read the rules, and submit. Then we got a sci-fi group build. This one is just for fun. Uh, no, no awards, none of that. This is purely just for recreation. So just come on, show what you can do, sci-fi related, and uh, see what else everyone else is doing. And once you've finished listening to us, go check out all the other podcasts. Uh, listers on the screen now, but some of them. Built Sideways, On the Bench, Scale Model Podcast, Just Making Conversation. All of them, guys, go check them all out. Go to scalemodels.com. You'll, uh, scale, was it? Scalemodelpodcast.com. You should find them all there. And, of course, a big shout-out to our Patreons. Paul Gallagher, Lord Floki, Robert Judson, Robert Brisbane, and a big hello to our new Pinju follower, Brielle Mast. Oh, God. Anyone want to take a guess? <laughs> Anyone good at pronunciation? I'm I'm just going to be respectful and not butcher your name, but thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Reale Mastroni, whatever. Uh, sorry about that. Close enough. Big Did thanks to you join... Macaroni? <laughs> Big thanks to all our patrons for supporting us at this time. Well... We are in dire need of your financial compensation. (laughs) (laughs) Well, do we have anything else from either of you two before we close out? Just a quick, short little uh, episode this time, but don't mind. Uh, Keep modeling. Yeah, That works. (laughs) Well, if you've made it... Get money, build models, save pandas. (laughs) <laughs> wise word <laughs> so if you are still with us you have been watching and listening to the micro machines podcast on yeah, behalf of all the guys we say thank you and we will catch you in the next episode Hoo-ah. see ya.